<laughs> okay guys, so there's another like weird looking device from China or AliExpress in this case. But you will be surprised like me when you basically see what you're going to get. Hey hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video we're going to take a close look at the PEP1. We also reviewed the PEP2 here on the channel and maybe we're doing like a cyber side in the future. Man, the description on the box are absolutely hilarious, but also to cry for. The saying here like it's Ultra HD 4K, but it has nothing to do with it. Sometimes you will be surprised when it comes to these weird looking devices, but when you're looking at the specs, it is nothing really fancy. It comes with a Gore-Tex A9 4 core. It has like 128, let's say DDR3. The memory is 128 megabyte, or yeah, it's kind of confusing what they're doing over here. It has the support, and uh, here's that like it support a 4K HDMI, but I think they mean like you have a 4K television, you can plug it in because the resolution is 1280 by, or rather said like 720p, 60 hertz. I really love this thing like game speed, FPS, 101 output, you know, like such a weird description. Here we do have like an overview of the system that it will be supporting. Think about CPS, or rather said like say MAME, Arcade, Neo Geo, PlayStation 1, and some handheld stuff. All right, but let's open it up and let's see what we're going to get in the inside. All right, so the first thing I was really surprised with when ordering that we do get like the Xbox knockoff controllers. I have personally never seen a system that had like no, like no PlayStation 2 knockoff controllers because it was like the main thing to use. So the quality is of course nothing like an Xbox controller, but what I find interesting, we do have like some macro like switches over here that we can program. It's kind of interesting, like we have a lot, of, a lot of cool features. The joysticks, like they even got this extra knob in the middle for some extra grip. The D-pad feels really cheap, absolutely. You can just hear it maybe. Like the same go for the ABXY, but I really like the round shape and just give it a better press. So the quality of the controller are still garbage compared with an original Xbox controller, but hey, it's better than the freaking PlayStation ones. The system, yeah, there's a different story. Let's talk about it later. We do get two dongles. Yeah, this is the same thing. We're going to talk about it later. Do we have like all the cables that we needed? For example, the one for power and connecting. And why do I get two freaking? Oh yeah. I think I'm brave for it here. We're needing this for the controller. Yeah, for charging it. Do I say that correctly? Or do I have another brain for it? Yeah, yeah, for controller. Okay, that's great. For the controller. So we do have the HDMI cable and of course the toilet paper manual that doesn't explain anything like always. Yeah, here it says like nothing all like basically how everything seems to be working, but the manual makes no sense to me. Yeah, so the system itself. So basically this is it. Like the what it does make really sense to me is like this thing is just too big to be a stick. It's not actually a stick, it's like a mini game box. So what I mean like when you're plugging this thing in, it's, it's quite neat in my opinion. You have like a plug and play device. I want to say like I would like to see this thing dangling on my, my HDMI port on my television because it weighs quite heavy for that. We do have an on love switch, so that is quite unique in my opinion. Yeah, that's something you don't see very very often or every single day. You have like the Type-C again, and this is for the data port, or better said, the DC 5 volt in. Then also we have like the micro SD card over here. Let's see what we're going to get with this. And 64 gigabyte. And don't be surprised that you can like only have 64 gigabyte maximum or 128 because they're running on old Android devices. That's basically what you're going to get. But we do have like two USB ports at the back, something that is not very common. I don't know what you think of this, but look at this. <laughs> this is up abnormal, like this gigantic thing sticking out of my freaking television. But yeah, I must say, it does fit. <laughs> but it's a little bit wiggly. Oh boy. So let's connect the two dongles or one to make a review, of course. And we're going to give this thing some juice. I will grab it from my television over there. But if it doesn't work, you need to get yourself a separate 5 volt power supply. And no, it wasn't included. All right, so everything has been connected. Both the controls are charged. Let's use the on off switch somewhere here. Oh, here it is. Let's turn it on. And we're going to get ourselves the most epic retro intro ever. Oh yeah, bro. <laughs> Let me know in the comments, where is the sound from? If you're a retro gamer, especially the PC, you know what it is. Drop it in the comments. But that seems to be the thing is from Emberdick? What? 
Okay guys, so this is the menu and it's very similar to all the other, let's say 4K game stakes that I've reviewed here on the channel. But the thing, the first thing that I just noticed that it works very fast because with the previous model, we had a lot of slowdowns. But here at the top, we're going to get the list type. With the type, you can choose what kind of system. So here you can see we have a PlayStation, yeah, it's Neo Geo and MAME, NES, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Classic and Game Boy Color, Super NES, Sega Master System, system you don't see a lot, or no, let's say like plug and play devices like these, Game Gear and Sega Mega Drive. And overall, like a very nice list. We have in here the history. Basically, by the way, he saves it. So even if you're turning off the system with your favorites and we're having the search option. So everything that you're going to need is over here. Okay, when you're pressing select to start, we're going to get a, like a mm, very like, basic settings option. There's not a lot that you can like, set up. There is no act to ratio over here. But there is something else I wanted to show you, but therefore I just need to basically boot up a game. So let's do that first. Okay, so when booting up a game and pressing select and start, at the same time, you're going to get the option for quick load, quick save, and we're having even video scaling. The weird thing with the video scaling, there is no x ratio option, only video scaling smooth and fast. So in my opinion, a little bit of a bummer that they didn't add these features, because I have seen it before with cheap devices like these. Okay, next up, Super Famicom. This is a system that somehow they're always messing it up with a lot of these plug and play devices. But today, I seem to be having a good day. The buttons are slightly different than the original controller, so that is annoying. And there is no way of changing it out, so far I can see, so that's a little bit of a bummer. Oh, managed to fix the turbo issue. Beefcake mode! Mm -hmm. Oh, you're not going to blow up in my face. Next up, let's try some 8-bit Sega stuff. A system you don't see very often on cheap devices like these. Most of the time you're only seeing them on Super Console X devices. Next up, again an 8-bit Sega one. One of my favorite games I play a lot like as a child, Sonic Girls. But I just wanted to show you like the settings again. You can only having like smooth and fast. And the problem is that there is no express ratio, man. It's just a bummer because it looks hideous. Look at this, how stretchy it is. Oh, 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 oh. But the emulation itself is quite good. So fun stories like the Smash TV game. I didn't own it back in the day, but I did play it a lot because I loaned it from a friend back in the day. But oh, man, the buttons are completely messed up. Ah, oh, that works better. Oh, spread shot. So I'm used to playing the Super NES version, so we can use the buttons and the D-pad. To walk and shoot in a certain direction, and I'm missing it completely out with. No, I want the shield! I want the shield! Yeah! Ooh, shield and the grinder, nice. For me, this is the ultimate test, just to, just to hear how the soundtracks are of this game. Is the emulation good, or is it shitty like always? Oh? So what they can do with most systems, they did it with the Pep K1. Another, it's also like a great game just to test out how good the D-pad is. For all the movements, if you just want to walk around, if you're having a shitty D-pad, it is basically just unplayable. Final test, PlayStation 1. So from this point on, every single system works very good. But so far I can see, I can hear with PlayStation 1, 
this game runs just like it should be. Let's go to quick load, quick settings. We even have an option to change an auto BIOS. So that is very special. And we're having the option to do make a save slot. You can see like the menu itself works very well, like super fast, even with PlayStation 1 games. D-pad and analog stick are working. Oh, they went a completely different direction. Ow, ow, I got shoot in the butt. Who is behind me? Soundtrack, everything works. No hiccups in the soundtracks or in the gameplay. You can say that this thing runs on 60 FPS full speed. For PlayStation 1 I want to do another testing, simply because I just wanted to know for sure if everything works like it should be. So next up, let's play this game. Oh crap, wrong button! No! Ah! Where's my racing? Where's the button? Oh, there it is. And it looks like and the D-pad are working. But also, this game seems to be running just fine. Oh, I did hear a minor hiccup. Maybe that's an one only thing that happens. And don't forget, you can always check out a different BIOS if you want to, if you're having any problems. I don't know how it's with you, but I really want to know what is inside this mean machine. Because the support of all of the games is just fabulous. It's just so amazing and I must say I'm completely surprised today by this product. And that is the reason I make reviews. I know there's a lot of shitty stuff and I burn so much money for this channel for buying the crappy stuff that basically in the end you can just be put it in the trash can or just put it for display and never use it again. But this is a device more like, hey, there's something quite interesting. Okay, so what's like the question how to open it up? Oh, I think the SD card, don't forget it, of course. Sometimes <laughs> I'm good getting it and that is the main problem. Oh boy, how do you open this up? It gets a little hot, but not like super hot. Hmm. How are I opening this up? Okay, the only thing I need to do is a rip and tear situation. Wait, it doesn't care if you need to rip and tear but of course I don't want to destroy the product for only a teardown okay the construction is very nice with four extra screws attached to the PCB in the main board let's gently open it up it's always the question I like how do you need to open it up do you need to slide it out do you need to click it out it seems to be that we need to click it out and that's the only thing that we're going to get in the inside this is the plastic casing. There are even some extra screws that holds this piece of plastic in place. Of course, we're not going to remove that. But a lot of these sticks nowadays, they're not getting really hot. The chips still produce a lot of heat. And this tiny block of cooling will be, like say, significant to give this thing the cooling that is needed. So that's what you're going to get most of the time. I just removed it. But let's take chat about the specifications. And what are we going to get with this? Because when you're looking at the specs, I think you're going to laugh very hard or cry. It depends, of course, how you look at it. So with some looking on the mainboard and some numbers, uh, I realized this is an ARM Gore-Tex A9 7309ST. The GPU, I couldn't find any information. Yeah, the RAM is a little bit weird story. 128 megabytes. When we're looking at the number of the CPU, you can see like back in the day, we're selling these things with a one gigabyte DDR3. Looking on the chip itself of the RAM, I couldn't find any information, but and overall, it's prehistoric tech. That is what we're going to get, but it still has the option to play up to PlayStation 1. So when you're getting yourself this product, the PEP 1, you can choose two different controllers. We're going to get the shitty PlayStation 2 knockoff controls like the basic kit. But I can say like this controller is absolutely worth getting if you want to get yourself a kit. First of all, the analog sticks feel very nice. Got a very nice rubber compound on it with some good grip. The D-pad already mentioned a couple of times in the video that this thing is very responsive. And with fighting games, they work just fine. Another great feature is like the back buttons can be programmed. I did some messing around with it, but also what I find is pretty cool. <laughs> with the beginning of Metal Slug, I noticed like there is a turbo function. Yeah, so with this controller, you have so many great functionalities and the turbo function can be super convenient if you want to play some shmups. So the controller is maybe lightweighted, but in overall, it plays very nice. 
So these are like those systems from AliExpress where you're going to be surprised with. Not like it's super, like it's 10 out of 10, no, no, no. There was always something they mess up, absolutely. There, there was always something. But this thing isn't really bad. I really love the form factor, but it's not like really a stick. I would say like plug in, and let's say a normal HDMI cable and just plug it in and use it like that. But the PEP one, it's not a super bad product. And the emulation performance is of course a mix, like always. But let me know in the comments what you think of this. What I thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become on the Wicked family. And it will be great to see you in the next video.